It's Monday, May 30th, 2022. I want to wish everybody a happy Memorial Day. And again, thank you to all those people that gave the ultimate sacrifice so that I could sit here today so that you could listen to a video like this, so that you could go out and have a barbecue tonight, so that you could live in the greatest country on planet Earth. And uh, a lot of you will probably say it is no longer the greatest country on planet Earth. And it, we are failing and falling. There's no doubt about it. But uh, to those people who gave the ultimate sacrifice, thank you so much. And uh, we should uh, actually be ashamed of ourselves for how we have allowed this country to fall to the uh, place that it is in right now. But that being said, it is Memorial Day weekend. I hope you're spending it with family and friends. Hope you're having a, a, a cookout tonight, a barbecue, whatever you may be doing. God bless you. God bless America. But uh, this is the most expensive mem Memorial Day that we have ever had as a country. Record gas prices, record chicken prices, record steak prices, record pork prices, record hamburger prices, record crime, record debt, record defaults record deficits. I was reading a comment last night where somebody said that um, don't worry about anything, just stop watching TV and you won't worry. And that is the farthest thing from the truth. You don't have to watch TV to worry about what is happening to this country right now. Take a look at the debts, take a look at the deficits. All of you uh, who went to the grocery store this weekend to stock up for Memorial Day uh, for, your, for your barbecues, look at the price of your beer, the price of those uh, hot dog buns, hamburger buns, the price of gasoline you had to put in your car just to get to the store. You don't have to watch the TV. You don't have to watch television uh, to have a real understanding of what is happening right now, to really worry about where this is all going and what's happening right now. TV has nothing to do with it. Every day you go out and you buy gas, you go to the grocery store, you write that check uh, to your landlord, you write that mortgage payment. Uh, any, anything you need now, is more expensive than it was last year, and it's gonna to continue to get more expensive. So uh, these people who just believe if we don't watch the television, which, hey, I'm all for, I, I think the less television, the better, but that's gonna fix the problem, that if uh, you just think positive, if you ignore reality, that's gonna make all this go away. No, actually, uh, it's, a, it's a, one of the main reasons why we're at where we're at, because we continued to ignore the problems. And millions of people ignored it uh, just by going out, continuing to spend uh, with the credit cards, spend money they don't have on things they don't need, just ignoring the truth, ignoring the warning signs, ignoring reality. And uh, here we are today paying more than ever for just about everything. And because we continue to just uh, ignore things, not want to believe it, think positive, well, you keep doing that and you're going to get yourself deeper and deeper into a mess here. And uh, you cannot hope this problem to go away. You cannot print your way out of this problem. This problem's here now, ladies and gentlemen. And now we're going to deal with the reality of it. And we're going to deal with real pain. Real pain is coming to America. Uh, we're going to see problems socially, politically, financially. It's all here. And it's going to be here for a very, very long time. I was reading an article uh, last night. Gas price hits $7.29 in Los Angeles. And they have a picture of it here. That's for regular. Super is 749. How in the world is this not going to have a catastrophic effect on the average American, the average household? You do not need to watch the television to, to go to a gas station and feel the pain every time you put gas in your car. I just put gas in my car the other day. It would cost $70 just to top off my car. Uh, they're taking uh, really the enjoyment uh, of driving right out, right out of your life. Uh, just running day-to-day -day activities now is getting very, very costly. And we know that this is being supported by the use of credit cards. Yes, some people, they can afford $10, $20 for a gallon of gas. The average person cannot afford these prices right now. And $7.29 in Los Angeles, uh, unbelievable. And if you're uh, maybe in the Midwest, if you're down south, what's going to happen if you see five dollar a gallon gas right now in those areas it's in the low fours 
But could you imagine uh, if you saw $5? We're seeing now here in the West Coast, seven plus dollars. I paid $6.49 for a gallon of gas here. That's what I'm paying. Inflation zaps US savings rate, a warning sign for some. Personal savings rate, and we talked about this the other day, has fallen to 4.4%. That, that, that is the April figure. It's the lowest level since 2008. Consumer spending accounts for 70% of US GDP. This is a major, major red flag for this economy. People are getting tapped out. People don't have money in their accounts. They're, half this country, literally, we know, statistically, half this country cannot pay uh, for a $400 emergency. Remember, people right now are dipping into their savings because of this high inflation. And that's even if people even have a savings at this point. How many people have already run through the savings? Many people didn't have a savings to begin with because they were just living paycheck to paycheck, unable. I mean, most people now are running into the red every month. They have no money left over to put into savings. We have not seen demand destruction yet, but the first thing to happen is consumers start dipping into savings. And that is because they're not willing to slow consumption. And I'm here to tell all of you that at some point, most people in this country are going to be forced to slow down the consumption. When there is no savings, ladies and gentlemen, when there are no credit cards because they've been tapped out, then we got big trouble. Then uh, they can no longer hide what is going on. Uh, I read a couple comments just the other day also where some people just think that they're you know, maybe they're wrong. Maybe they're seeing things wrong. Maybe they're crazy. You know, everything seems great. The restaurants seem busy. The roads seem busy. And I agree, they do. But mathematically, we know that this is winding down. It's going to come to an end. Uh, the reality of this, it is winding down right now. And it's, it's hard to digest this. It's hard to believe it. Yes, when you see people at the restaurants, when you see traffic on the road and people out here are paying six plus dollars for a gallon of gas and drinking $15 uh, Mai Tais and going out to dinner and having a great time. And we all have to understand too that there are people that still have money. There are people that did cash out refis. There are people that made money in the markets. There are, you know, the 1%, the 10% that are still doing well. But the majority of this country, and I'm here to tell you this, is suffering. And the majority of this country cannot stop consuming. And they have tapped in to their savings to continue to go out to dinner, to continue to put gas in their cars. They are running up credit card debt at record levels so they can go out to dinner, so they can put gas in their cars, so they can take a vacation, so they can buy stuff that they don't even need. They cannot stop it. This, the reality has not kicked in yet, ladies and gentlemen, but it is going to. And it is accelerating. The debt is getting so out of control. Fed governor... Christopher Waller says he's prepared to take rates past neutral to fight inflation. He expects 50 basis point rate hikes to continue. He said he thinks the Fed can raise rates and, and tamp down inflation without causing a severe economic downturn. Neutral level currently is pegged at 2.5%. And he's saying that we're going to go above that or he uh, is prepared to go above that. Now, the question is, is the rest of the Federal Reserve prepared to go above that? And what do you think that this is going to do to the housing market, to the auto market, to, the, to, to credit cards? Uh, anytime you need to borrow money, what does this do to the credit market? This is going to be uh, catastrophic. And many people uh, out there believe that this is not going to happen that the Fed uh, will cool it and reverse course this summer. I still don't believe that. And I may be the only one. Uh, many of you may be right. They may re reverse course, but that will be uh, very, very bad uh, for inflation. Uh, what happens to inflation? If we're supposed to be fighting inflation right now and the Fed reverses course and begins to expand the balance sheet, uh, lower interest rates. What does that mean for inflation? How will inflation ever stop 
if we don't get interest rates ahead of the inflation rate question, comment down below. So I think the Fed is in a uh, very, very bad situation here. They are in a corner. Uh, either way they go, this is going to be very, very bad, and it's going to be very, very painful. And it's going to be the majority of Americans that are going to feel the pain once again. The Hampton summer rental market is facing an unexpected chill as inventory piles up and prices come down on CNBC. Supply of rentals in the Hamptons is surging. Rental prices in the first quarter of 2022 fell 26%. Some owners are slashing prices by 30% or more just to fill the properties. What does this mean? Is this another bellwether? Are, are people uh, traveling somewhere else or are people at this point now just saying, hey, let's cool it a little bit? And remember, this is the higher end group of people too. Are they saying, hey, maybe we better just sit back a little bit, cool our jets and see how this plays out? Maybe dropping, you know, ten. $20,000 a week in the Hamptons to rent an estate, maybe we better just cool it. So, so I, I don't know, but uh, this does not look good for uh, the future of Airbnb because so many people, and we've talked about this in the past too, so many people bought homes because they were going to be real estate moguls through Airbnb, that they were going to rent the, these houses that they bought for $500 or $1,000 a night. And uh, if they could keep these houses rented 70, 75% of the year, they were going to make a lot of money, pay for the mortgage. Well, now people uh, aren't traveling as much. Uh, we had um, 6,000 flights canceled this weekend. Uh, people are not traveling as much. They don't have the discretionary uh, spending that they once did. Uh, th the smart money is pulling back. Of course, there's a lot of dumb money out there. and People will continue to just burn through it. But when you talk about real estate in the Hamptons and it's slowing down, you know, the, these people are a little bit smarter. Uh, they have a little bit more control. That's why they're wealthy. That's why they can rent homes for ten or twenty or thirty thousand dollars a week or more because they're smart and they they can control what they're doing, um, and they see what is happening. Where the average American today is probably gonna you know sp spend a lot of money on food, a lot of money on booze. People are probably out at Ross and TJ Maxx and Marshalls spending lots of money running up the credit cards. Probably at Macy's opening up a new account on that credit card, that new Macy's card, so they get the 30% discount and, you know, add another card to the collection. Uh, and I'm not talking about most of you. Most of you are too smart and you're too awake to do something like that. But this is the problem where a majority of this country cannot control themselves. They cannot stop consuming. They can't stop eating. They can't stop buying stuff. And they're completely out of control. This is why we have an obesity epidemic in America. This is why we have a debt epidemic in America. Uh, and it's going to continue to get out of control. And something must break. Something has to give here uh, in order uh, for this to, to come to an end. Uh, people need to take responsibility for their health, responsibility for their finances. Uh, the government needs to take responsibility for its finances. And as long as people have credit cards and access uh, to this money and the government has a printing press, we're going to continue down this path. And it's going to be a path of destruction. So again... Airbnb, what are your thoughts on Airbnb? Uh, I think that people who bought homes just to Airbnb in an overvalued market are going to pay a very, very severe price. I think they're going to they're going to regret what they did. Uh, another article, uh, it's titled "Major Retailers, E-Tailers, Preparing for Economic Implosion as They Shed Massive Amounts." of warehouse space. Amazon looking right now presently to shed, tw uh, excuse me, 10 million, looking to shed 10 million square foot of warehouse space, 10 million square feet of warehouse space. Amazon looking to shed right now. Companies like Amazon uh, are looking to shore up the bottom line. And if they're looking to shore up the bottom line, if they're looking uh, to shed all this excess warehouse space, guess what else they're going to be shoring up? It's going to be jobs. Uh, you're going to see uh, a lot of these big companies, a lot of tech companies, a lot of people in the real estate market, mortgage lenders, et cetera, warehouse workers. Uh, they're going to be losing their jobs, ladies and gentlemen. 
plain and simple. That's a fact. They are going to be losing their jobs. And this is going to be another uh, negative uh, effect, uh, another negative impact on this economy and on the housing market. Uh, and it's a sign that the economy is seizing up. And I want to I finish with this last article. And it's titled, Smithfield Recalls Bacon Topping Products. Get this, 90 tons of bacon needs to be thrown out. Smithfield Bacon Recall is massive. The company has recalled approximately 185,610 pounds of RTE that's ready to eat bacon. 90 tons of bacon, they say, may have been contaminated by metal. This, according to the U.S. Department of Agriculture, Agriculture and Food Safety. Right now, uh, they don't know how much metal may have gotten into the bacon. They're not sure how much bacon was really contaminated. There's no reports of anybody dying or, or, or getting sick at this point. But how in the world are things like this happening in a first, in a first world nation? We've got a food shortage, uh, a baby formula crisis, and now 90 tons, over 185,000 pounds of bacon product being thrown away. What a waste. And it, it, it just seems like this stuff is becoming more and more common. Uh, food uh, distribution centers burning to the ground. Uh, it's just really, really odd. Is this coincidental? What is going on? Uh, comment down below. But uh, food now is becoming so dangerous. We know that all the stuff in the food is extremely dangerous. But now you're taking a risk that there may be metal in your food? I, I mean, uh, is the next uh, company going to be a cookie company or a candy bar company where, you know, some uh, material or metal got in, into the food or into, this, into the product and now uh, we have to be worried about that? What in the world is going on? Food now, we have a food shortage, but now the food that we do have is dangerous to eat. I mean, this is really uh, concerning. Uh, next, we'll be hearing a, the same thing about water, that something got into the water and people are getting sick. Uh, I mean, it's just endless where this is all going. But uh, as, as the one gentleman said in the comments the other day, don't worry, don't worry, just shut off your television, everything will be fine. Have a great weekend, ladies and gentlemen. Stay safe out there. Don't get complacent. Keep preparing. Things are about to get crazy. God bless.